Here's the show that has his name on it. Bob McKenzie is here. So is our director scouting Craig Button with his insights. It is the definitive consensus ranking who the scouts believe should go where in the draft coming this weekend in Dallas. The 50th modern draft. Bob's done rankings for oh, 35 years or so of that. And I'm about to make all of us feel old, old. Because this is the first draft where millennium babies were into the 2000s available in this draft, which is just ludicrous. We remind you as we look at the draft order, including where all the Canadian teams will select in the first round, Bob is not projecting which team will pick which player. This is just the consensus of the scouts Bob surveyed as to who the best prospects available are. Television is usually about creating drama, sometimes fake drama. That's what we do. We're not even going to bother because this has been obvious from the beginning of this year, perhaps the beginning of last year. Number one will be can't miss Rasmus, Rasmus Dahlin. Rasmus Dahlin gör ett av för Frölunda. Boys of Dahlin is so impressive. This is one very promising young player. Why is it so obvious? What separates him from the field? Well, number one before the season began, number one now, and never any doubt along the way. So big, so fast, so strong, so skilled, good without the puck, good with the puck, dynamic, just competitive character, you name it, he's got it going here. And I mean, you want to slow the hype train a little bit and not raise expectations to a ridiculous level, but he's almost as big as Victor Hedman and likely every bit as skilled, if not more. He does things that you could say are Eric Carlson-like. Um, and if you really want to get into the granddaddy of all comparisons, there's a lot of elements to his game where he makes it look so easy, where it's like Nick Lidstrom. But you don't want to take an 18-year-old kid that's never played a game in the NHL and put him on that level. But the reality is this. Whether it was Hedman, Carlson, or Lidstrom, none of them did the things at age 18, 17, 18, that this kid has done. So, figure it out from there. When he goes number one, and we know he's going number one, he will become only the second Swedish player to be the number one overall pick in the draft. The other, of course, Matt Sundin to Quebec in 1989. That one worked out pretty well as well, although the hat didn't fit so well on Matt's head. <laughs> Director of Scouting, Craig Button, you've been on the Rasmus Dahlin train for years here. We, we've really seen this coming for an awful long time, haven't we? Yeah, we have, to Bob's point. I mean, what he did at a young age, 16 years of age, it's really unbelievable, unprecedented. And the skills are obvious, but the creative mind sees opportunity. And when they don't have the play that is in front of them, they can improvise. And that's exactly what Rasmus Dahlin is capable of doing. And he's going to Buffalo, and his coach is Phil Housley. The similarities in terms of deception and improvisation are eerily similar. So Phil Housley is going to get a real good kick out of watching himself play in a Buffalo Sabres uniform when he gets a close-up look at Rasmus Dahlin. Two things remain unchanged throughout our three draft ranking shows that we did this year. Rasmus Dahlin at number one and at number two, Andrei Svechnikov from Russia. Oh, Svechnikov! He's one of the top considerations to go first overall in the 2018 NHL draft. What a play from Russia and what hands from Svechnikov. He's a special player. A little bit of dazzle there from the Russian star. Elite talent. Elite talent. So was Svechnikov at number two as definitive a choice as Darlene was at number one by the scouts? Yes, although for much of the season that wasn't the case. For much of the season we had three wingers, Andrei Svechnikov, Philip Zadina and Brady Kachuk that were in this group and Svechnikov always seemed to come out just on top but the, the, the opinions were decidedly mixed depending on who you talk to. But now in this final analysis there was un he was a unanimous pick at number two. He had separated himself from Zadina and Kachuk and the rest of the field. And in fact, some scouts I talked to said he's closer to Darleen <laughs> than he is to than the rest of the field is to him. He's big, he's strong, he's fast, he's skilled. He can score goals anyway. Off the rush, one-timers, off the cycle, going to the front of the net, getting your nose dirty. Uh, and really Americanized too, North Americanized. He's been in North America since he was 16 years old. Played in Barry, 40 goals in 44 games. That's goals per game at .91. Highest since Connor McDavid, who had 44 and 47, a .94. Give us a scouting report on Svechnikov, Greg. 
Well, we talk about the uh, the top skills, and you know when you start to go through the scouting report, it's pretty obvious that this is an elite talent. I mean, right from the skating, which is outstanding, the shot he can score in a lot of different ways. The goal scoring, as to Bob's point, he can do in it all manner of ways. He can do it with that excellent shot. He can do it in tight. He understands how to get himself unchecked. He's got fast hands. And when we start talking about comparable type players, the, mo the name that always comes to my mind is Marion Hossa. That ability to play on the big part of the ice, on the small part of the ice, and be able to drive the puck and drive offense. That's Andre Svechnikov. And to Bob's point, he certainly looks like the guy that's clearly separated himself from the rest of the pack. Right, so Dahlien separated himself up here. Svechnikov has separated himself here. So now it gets interesting as we get to three through five. Actually, it's, yeah, it's become much more interesting. In fact, everything that was structured before seems like it's blowing all over the place here. But let's look at the three, four, and five, starting with number three, Brady Kachuk, the big raw bone Boston University winger. He's less refined, not as polished as the other elite wingers, but he plays a hard driving, aggravating power and agitation game. He proved at the World Junior Championship he can deliver high-end offense in elite pressure pack competition. Because quite frankly, there were times at Boston University this year where he simply didn't produce or create at the level for a prospect ranked this high. Nine of the ten scouts we surveyed by TSN have him as a top five prospect. His only rank outside of that was at number seven. So right now a real good bet to go in the top five. Number four, Philip Zadina of the Halifax Mooseheads. The crafty check with the quick feet and quick hands in tight spaces and small places is arguably the best natural goal scorer in the entire draft. Witness his 44 goals in 57 games. Not as big and powerful or as athletic as Svechnikov. In fact, Zadina's NHL Combine physical test results of those elite players were best at average, but he has an amazing release and a deadly accurate shot but he can also make plays at a really high level. Remains a consensus top five pick, but it is noteworthy that five of the 10 scouts surveyed by TSN did have him slipping outside their top five. So that'll be an interesting development to watch. Number five, Jasperi Kotkaniemi. The big Finn has been rocketing up the charts, moving from number 19 on our mid-season rankings to number five with a bullet now. He's in the, he is the undisputed number one center in this defenseman and winger heavy top 10 field. Kotkaniemi was a star at the World Under-18 Championships in April, and he led Finland to a gold medal with stellar scoring, playmaking, and a 200-foot game. He's not blazing fast, but his skating makes the grade, and stylistically, he reminds a lot of people of the way Alexander Barkov plays. So this guy's been on a rocket ride over the course of the season, and I would expect that continues as he pushes to get in the top five. And up 14 in our index, rating where they were last time. We'll see that throughout the show on the right-hand side of your screen. Dahlin will be the 13th defenseman chosen first overall in the 50-year history of the draft. Sveshnikov projected to be the first Russian chosen second since Malkin back in 2004. So no Canadians in the top five, which is a rarity. It will be the first time since 1999 if it follows the order that Bob has there. And only the second time in draft history the Canadian has not gone in the top three, let alone the top five. I... Take it, we're going to get to some Canadians. So as we go through 6 through 10, who is the top Canadian prospect? Well, there are some Canadian prospects that could punch into that top five. And the first guy with the best chance of doing that is number six, Noah Dobson. Now, he's the big six foot three defenseman from the Acadie Bathurst T10. And he earned the pre-draft title of top blue liner, not named Darlene, in part because he played so well and so long in leading his team to the Memorial Cup Championship. Dobson's a really strong skater. He's got a high degree of creativity and vision and offensive prowess. And the scouts really feel like we're only seeing the tip of this iceberg. Four of the 10 TSN scouts do have him in their top five. So this is a guy who could break into that grouping. Number seven, Evan Bouchard of the London Knights, another Canadian. The third year OHL defenseman put up outstanding offensive point totals with the Knights. The rangy and heady six foot two D-man is arguably the best passer in this draft. Long bomb, short outlets to get the attack going. Take your pick, he can really pass the puck. Also is a very good shot from the point. His skating is good, but not great, though no one feels it's as a liability at all. Although Bouchard is only three months older than Dobson, he's technically viewed as a year older. That is, he's a late 1999 birth date as opposed to 2000 for what that is worth. Number eight, Quinn Hughes, the University of Michigan American freshman defenseman has a wow factor to his game. He's the first of a plethora of really smart and skilled and dynamic sub six foot offensive D-men in this draft. 
He plays a go-go-go offensive game, more like a rover than a defenseman, but he's totally fearless. He's willing to make the high-risk, high-reward, but also high-danger play. Critics say he's not defensively aware or responsible. His boosters would say he doesn't need to play that much defense when the puck is so often on a stick. And a real good effort playing alongside men at the Senior World Championships for Team USA also helped his cause. Number nine, Oliver Wallstrom. He started out as a nine-year-old YouTube sensation who scored this dazzling highlight reel shootout goal at a Boston Bruin game. But the six foot one, 200 plus pound American winger is an elite shooter and goal scorer with one of the most dangerous shots in the game. He's a little one dimensional, but what a dimension to have as he projects as a possible first line scoring winger in the NHL. Number 10, Adam Boquist. The Swedish defenseman, who's just a shade under six feet, is a dynamic offensive blue line. He started and finished the season on high notes. He was the top defenseman at the Ivan Holenka under 18 last August, and he was outstanding again at the World Under 18 Championship in April. In between, his game wavered a little bit as he bounced around, played some games in the Swedish Junior League, the second division, the Elite League. He was ranked as high as number five by our scouting panel and as low as number 14. So he's at the same time both a threat to get into the top five or fall out of the top 10. Yeah, he has dropped five. That's the only real dropper in the top 10. Folk was down at number 10. Six players, the first six, representing six different nationalities. It's the United Nations draft. If that were to happen, it would be a first. And Bouchard set a top prospects game record with four assists. So Canada projected to match an all-time low with just two picks in the top 10. Back to Bob's rankings, 11 through 15. Barrett Hayton, the Canadian, the center from Sault Ste. Marie, up one, and he's at number 11 right now. The big riser, Vitaly Klafsov, right winger, up 27 spots, 11 playoff points, a KHL record for most playoff points by a player under 18. Ty Smith is at 13, a defenseman. Joe Valeno, a center, is at 14. And Grigory Denisenko, a left winger, is at number 15. Who has the best chance of this group to move into the top 10? Well, Barrett Hayton's an interesting case because he is the second best center in this draft, uh, perceived to, in terms of center prospects behind Kot Kiniemi, uh, who's at number five. Uh, so Barrett Hayton plays a great all-around game. He's smart, he's competitive, he put up really solid offensive numbers in more of a support role behind number one center, Morgan Frost, of the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. The question scouts ask of Hayton is this, can he be a number one center in the National Hockey League in terms of a point producer? Or is it maybe a number two? Or is it maybe more of a high-end number three? If you believe he's that number one guy, this is the guy that could maybe crack the top five. He did get some consideration as a top five pick. And you mentioned the Russian Kravstov. He was the only other player. All 12 players we've got ranked uh, in the top 12 got at least one vote as a top five prospect in this draft. I mentioned earlier the first six were six different nations. The next five are from five different nations as we look at Bob's 16 through 20. Martin Kaut from the Czech Republic is at 16. Joel Farabee, the American at 17. Dominic Bach at 18. Sarah Noel is at 19. 28 goals on 105 shots. A 27% shooting percentage in Oshawa. And Rasmus Kupari from Finland is at number 20. Bob, some concerns about Kaut's health. Initially at the NHL Combine, he was was flagged as part of a pre-screening medical that he had a congenital heart condition that could be fixed. He had the procedure done in Prague. The doctors have given him the green light, but after doing the procedure, the doctors also proclaimed he didn't have the condition in the first place. But in any case, he's got the green light medically, and there shouldn't be any cloud of doubt hovering over this prospect going into the draft. Bob has Isaac Lundstrom from Sweden, Ryan McLeod from Canada, Adrian of Americans, Keandre Miller, and Bodie Wild at 24 and 25. Your final six, Jared McIsaac, the defenseman for Halifax, is a team. The Knights traded a lot of their core veterans at the trade deadline in the OHL. Foodie got a lot more ice time and responded incredibly, went on an unbelievable tear in the OHL and rocketed up the chart.